This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2022 No Boundaries No Bow 19.8. Okay. Now this is not a floor plan video. It's a how-to video. So I'm just going to show you some of the features and how they work. So here we are at the door side rear. There's regular stabilizers with a three-quarter inch uh, crank. Okay. Which is up front. Uh, we have a, a power awning with LED strip. This is a quick connect for a, a, a sprayer for the water system. This down here where it says quick connect is, is the, an LP quick connect for the, for the griddle. Now the griddle hangs right here on this rail right here and you get a, a, a LP hose with it and it connects right there and also connects to the back of the griddle. The griddle is right here. So you have um, the, the rack that it goes on plus the appliance itself right there. Okay. Uh, this is the, the vent for the range hood. If you're going to be venting, if you're going to be using the fan in the range hood, you want to make sure you come out here and open this baffle so it flaps freely. Right. If it, if you're not using it, you can keep it shut. But uh, when you're venting, you wanna you wanna open it up. Okay. So let's see. If we move forward. One thing to remember is that this door will interfere with the awning arm, the front awning arm. So you always want to keep it when you're using the awning. You always want to keep it at a a 90 degree angle from the side of the trailer, so it doesn't interfere. Okay. Alrighty. So you have a, a power tongue jack up and down in a, in a hitch light. And then you have this plug here. You can pull this plug out, this rubber plug, if it happens to fail for any reason. If it fails, uh, you can pull that plug and then, oops, I'm stuck here, use this crank right here. To crank it manually so you can always get a hitch and unhitch. This one here is your three-quarter inch crank for your stabilizers. This is the quick connect LP hose for your griddle and this is the quick connect for your water. It's got a sprayer and a coiled hose. Okay now you have one LP tank with regulator. You have a deep cycle marine battery and that's a breaker there of course and this is a uh, the kill switch for your battery. So if you want to shut the battery off, disconnect it from the trailer, you can just shut it off. Okay? Alright, so here we have water. So the most common way to get water to the trailer is the city water hookup right here. Just hook the hose on there and you're all set. Now if you're camping someplace where there is no city water, you're boondocking or whatever, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here and then use the onboard pump to pump the water. I'll show you the switch for the pump when we get inside, but um, that's where you would fill your onboard water tank. Of course, this is your water heater. Thing to remember, this works on both gas and electric. Never run it without water in it, so you drain it right here. It takes an inch and a sixteenth six-point socket, um, but if you, if you drain it because you're not going to be camping for a while, which is perfectly okay, perfectly normal, just make sure you fill the tank up before you turn it on. That's very important. Uh, to turn on the electric heating element that's behind this cover, you use this rocker switch right here. The switch for the gas is inside. I'll show you that when we get inside there. Just remember to always fill the tank before you use it. Okay? And you need an inch and a sixteenth six-point socket to pull that drain plug and to put it back in. Okay. Just so you know, your slide out is, a, is commonly referred to as a Schwintech. Even though it's owned by a company called Lippert now, uh, which is big in the RV business, the uh, people still generally refer to it as a Schwintech, so just so you know, in case you need to know that. Uh, you have a uh, 30 foot, 30 amp power cord, short cord, and this is a reducer for it, in case you want to reduce it down to 20 amps and plug it in at home. Okay. Uh, these are your dump valves here, okay, black and gray. Black is toilet water waste, gray is sink and shower water. Cable and satellite through. That's your dump hose, I think I mentioned that. Um, 
this right here is your black tank flush. So after you've dumped your black tank, if you want to flush it out, you can make sure, like it says on this sticker, make sure you leave the, the black tank valve open. Hook on the hose, hook up the hose of the dump station, turn it on, and it'll spray the inside of your black tank off, out, clean off the sensors, that sort of thing, okay? Uh, this it, housing tells us it's pre-wired for a Furan backup camera kit if you wanted to add that. You can always add it at any time. You have a ladder, which is great because it makes it easy to inspect the roof. The manufacturer stays you should inspect it every 30 days. I'm sorry, every 60 days. Um, make sure you you just go up there, take a look up there, be very careful or have somebody else do it. And uh, just make sure there's no cracking or separation where water could get in. Make sure there's no damage to the roofing attachments or to the roofing material that could be caused by, let's say, low branches or road debris flying up there, anything like that. So inspecting the roof should be part of your regular maintenance. It's very important. This here is a canoe rack, or a kayak rack, I guess. It would be more... It would be more uh, the correct name. Now this has a power converter and a power inverter, okay? So this switch here is for the power inverter. Okay, so that shut it off right there. Um, you don't need to run it unless you're inverting power. Um, Basically, this just sends power to the to the outlet, so you could run a, a a AC appliance if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you don't have any AC power. It'll invert the power from the battery from DC to AC, and then you could run a a, a small appliance if you needed to. Only run the inverter if you're going to invert power. Okay? You just poke it to turn it on, and you hold it for a few seconds before you let go of it to turn it off. All right? So that's the inverter. It also converts power, which is the opposite that's going from AC to DC. So if you want to invert, or if you're inverting, you use that button over there. Inversion is going from DC to AC power. But conversion, which is pretty typical these days, is done right here in the power converter. Um, it goes from AC to DC power. So you have, when you're plugged in, you have regular AC circuit breakers over here, uh, 110 AC. Right? Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side. You see the 12 volt fuses. And it's also a battery tender. So as long as you're plugged in, it's going to keep your battery charged also. So um, it converts AC to DC power and it charges your battery. Okay. This, while we're down here, is your, is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be glowing green like it is. If it's not, get it serviced. It should always be green. Okay, it's very important, of course. Alrighty. So, have your table strapped up here for, for travel. This obviously goes here, right? And there's another one there, so you can turn this into a, a, a place to sleep if you need to. Plus, you've got the two bunks over here, um, plus the bed here, so there's a lot of sleeping room. Uh, this is your uh, Connects TV. This this Connects TV, I believe. Let me look at it. I believe it's it does. Uh, let me just see here, because someone's pulled a sticker off of it. Let's see. Da -da -da -da. Let me see. Bear with me for a second, please. Okay, so I'm going to say this is this is an FM radio. Also, it should also have Bluetooth. I wish I could tell for sure, but uh, I think that's correct. Okay. Um, this also on a swing out bracket, and you can probably see that green light up there, that LED. That should always be on, in order to uh, that tells you that the the digital antenna uh, signal booster is on, which is important. It's also got a 12 volt plug on it, so you can see it's running on 12 volts. Okay. Alrighty. So here, we got, let's see what we have here. Porch light. 
awning light. Okay. So your uh, awning switch here, remember I told you to keep your, your uh, door going straight out. Extend it this way. Never leave it out unattended. If you're not going to be at the campsite, roll it in so it doesn't get damaged by the weather. The other switch here is for your slide room, right? Um, so you have that. There's also going to be, uh, probably in here, let's look and see. Yeah. So this is your control panel here. Uh, you can light your water, or, yeah, light your water heater on gas right here. Remember I told you that to turn on the uh, electrical part, the, uh, the uh, heating element, you just use that switch in the lower left-hand corner outside. Well, this one will light it on gas. Here's your levels here. It tells you what's, what's full and what's not. Those up in one-third increments. The water pump I told you about to pump water out of the fresh water tank is right here. It's also uh, used for uh, winterizing the trailer. Okay, You have a heated holding tank. So there's the three switches for your three holding tanks. So that, uh, that will extend your camping season. You also have a solar panel. Right now, this is a good time to, to explain it. See how it's saying F-U-L and it's flashing? That's telling us that it is totally charged, meaning there's no more room for storage in the battery. And um, what's happened is, is this controller has shut the panel off. And as soon as the energy level drops in your battery, then it'll turn back on and work. All the buttons will work as normal. But right now it's totally full, like it's telling you right there. And when it says FUL, it also tells us 13.6 volts. Um, let me see what else I can find out from here. The battery type, let me see if I can change that. Looks like it isn't quite finished doing it. That's set to wet there, like it should. Okay. Uh, right now, 1.9 amps are being gained from the sun to set to the, your battery. Uh, 9.1 amp hours of storage and 13.6 volts. So keep that in mind. So that, that FUL and the flashing happens when there's no room for storage left in the battery. Okay? Um, let's see here. This is a shower miser right here. This is a, uh, uh, a green device. It, it basically what it does is it normally when you're uh, normally when you're heating up the hot water for the shower, it, the the cool water will just go down the drain. So you'll be wasting fresh water one, and you'll be wasting space in your gray tank two. So what this does when you put it in the correct position, it it circulates water around in a loop. So um, what happens is the, when you're heating up the hot water, you turn it on, it'll circulate back to the water heater through the pump, up to here, back around and around and around again till it gets hot. When it gets hot, it'll, this will change dramatic color. It'll be, generally it's a beige color. You'll, you'll see the change. Once you see that, you just go to regular position and you've got hot water. The idea is, like I said, you don't waste any good water or fresh water or any storage space while you're heating it up. So that's a shower miser. You can read more about it in your tablet, or I mean, sorry, in your packet. You can also go to the manufacturer's sites and look at their product videos too. That's another good way to learn. But this is the shower miser and it's a water recirculator. Okay? Alrighty. The toilet is a typical RV toilet. It sits over a black tank. You got a flush pedal here. So you can't use it dry. So when you get to the campground, your, your black tank is empty, of course, because it's been dumped. So you come in here, you put you hook up your power in your water, then you come in here, you'll put your one dose of chemical, uh, and then you'll step on the pedal, whoops, step on the pedal, and let at least a gallon of water flow into the tank along with the chemical, then it's ready to be used. You can't use a dry. If you use it without chemical and water, the smell will be terrible, plus it'll get clogged up. So you always want chemical and water in the gray tank before you start using it, okay? Alrighty, so let's back out here. The refrigerator is, the, is a 12 volt DC refrigerator. So you have temperature here, on and off temperature, and then you have three different modes for uh, nighttime, you know, just power saving modes. But it runs on 12 volt DC. This is the, the range hood, uh, I told, vent fan I told you about. Remember to use the, open up the, the baffle on the vent when you're using it, okay? Your, this is, um, let's see here. 
This you're just going to use a, uh, a lighter to light it. These are your keys right here. You have um, a uh, microwave, but you have a, uh, a convection microwave. So it is convection. This is your uh, vacuum. Now it does not come with hoses, although that is an option. Basically what you do is you sweep your dirt right in front of it there and it'll suck the dirt right off the floor into the into the bag. So um, if you if you ever wanted to add uh, attachments you can all you can purchase them but um, generally speaking you're just going to sweep all the dirt in front of that and it'll suck it right out. Okay? Alright. So let's see. Let's see what else we have here. This is your thermostat. It works like any other thermostat. Very simple. Just hit the mode button to get what you want. This is a, a, a dose of chemical for the toilet to start off with. Um, the battery for your smoke detector and, and your packet with all your literature in it uh, for all the different things I've shown you. Like I said, you also can use manufacturer's videos. Okay, so let me look around. I think we've covered it all. Emergency window there. Okay. All right, so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Uh, please remember what I said about inspecting the roof. Um, you can't see what's happening on the roof, so you have to go up there and look. Uh, you're just protecting your investment. It should be part of your regular maintenance. Also, um, right now this is in camping mode, so the, there's no antifreeze in the system. It's all filled with water. The, the bypass valves and the water heater are in camping mode and it's full with water right now, so it's ready to go. Remember, don't run the water heater without water in it, okay? Thank you.